which has now been diagnosed in more than 150,000 war veterans. Professor Günther is convinced it is to blame and campaigns for uranium weapons to be outlawed. At conferences like this in Hamburg, he discusses the issue with other scientists. Here, for example, it emerged that the children of American Gulf War veterans are three times more likely to be born with deformities than other children. In London habe ich auch vor Abgeordnetes Unterhauses gesprochen und dabei Veteraninnen und Veteranen des Krieges kennengelernt, die sehr unter den Nebenwirkungen der Uranmunition litten. Ich weiß auch, dass viele ins Unterhaus gegangen sind, um ihre missgebildeten Kinder zu zeigen und haben dabei ihre Kriegsauszeichnung zurückgegeben. Nine-year-old Kenneth Duncan is the son of one of those British Gulf War veterans. His deformities are not immediately apparent. His toes are joined together, he has cleft ears, his immune system is severely damaged. He tires quickly, needs lots of rest, and suffers from frequent severe headaches. His father, Kenny Duncan, worked behind the combat line in the 1991 Gulf War. His job? To repair damaged tanks, which included tanks hit by DU rounds in friendly fire. We were climbing over it, inside it, working on them, you know, and we weren't wearing any respirators or anything like that. So we were breathing this dust in constantly um, for months on end at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So it's quite a high concentration that we were exposed to. When Kenny Duncan got married and went to war, he was in perfect health. Now the uranium he inhaled has made him a sick man. The latter years, like the last probably five or six years, have been the hardest. Like it's got like he's getting a lot of muscle muscle spasms at night and he's got quite jerks in that like he's taken a fit. Mm. She's on medication and that for that. I think it's a constant worry as well as as he, he's spitting up a lot of blood and we don't know where it's coming from. Immediately after the first Gulf War, uh, some scientists and medical doctors tried to describe the reasons for the illnesses in the Gulf War veterans. And one of the first theories was inhalation of the desert sand, and they call it Al Askan disease. Now, if the inhalation of desert sand was reason for Gulf War disease, everyone in a desert world would be affected by it. It is not inhalation of desert sand, it is inhalation of radioactive desert sand. And that is why I call this syndrome 3D syndrome, deadly desert dust. Professor Günther has long and frequently pointed out the dangers of uranium dust and the pathological impact of low-level alpha radiation on pulmonary tissue and the blood. Und ich habe immer wieder betont, dass die Nebenwirkungen doch erheblich sind der Niedrigstrahlung. Man hat es unterschätzt und habe natürlich viele Beispiele gegeben, auch von kanadischen und amerikanischen Wissenschaftlern, die der gleichen Ansicht sind dass man die Niedrigschalung bisher unterschätzt hat. Und ich habe immer wieder äh, angeregt, ein Institut zu gründen, um sich mit dieser Niedrigstrahlung zu beschäftigen. Professor Albrecht Schott examined the genes of British Gulf War veterans. In Kenny Duncan's blood, he found a striking number of genetic mutations. Mutations typically found in persons exposed to radioactivity. Mutations which could not be due to anything else. Kenny Duncan war ein kraftstrotzender, gesunder Mann. Seine Chromosomen sahen so aus, wie Sie es hier im Bild sehen. Dann kam die Strahlung, das kam zu Chromosomenbrüchen. Dieser hohen Zahl von Chromosomenbrüchen kann man in der Familie Mandy und Kenny Duncan sehen. Sie haben drei Kinder und alle drei Kinder sind genetisch schwer geschädigt. Das Uran ist bei der Verbrennung zu so kleinen Partikeln verbrannt, dass es überall im Körper hingelangt, nicht nur zu den Lymphozyten, auch zum Gehirn, zur Leber, auch zum Sperma und zu den Eizellen. Deshalb sind die Kinder von Kenny Duncan genetisch krank. Diese Kinder haben auch geschädigte Chromosomen und sie werden natürlich hohe Raten genetisch geschädigter Kinder hervorbringen und deren Kindeskinder wieder. You know, and if the, and if the government think for a minute that this problem is going to go away, 
when all of us 52,000 die, then they've got a big shot coming because all of us 52,000 will end up having families. And these families, are, these kids, are going to go out and get normal civilian partners. Could be like an epidemic. Do you know what I mean? We could end up infecting half the country with whatever we've got. In February 2004, a British court upheld the claim that Kenny Duncan's health problems stemmed from exposure to uranium ammunition. He thus became the first Gulf War veteran in the world to have his illness officially recognized as being caused by depleted uranium. But at that time you didn't know anything about the no, no, we The first we knew that they considered the depleted uranium shells to be a danger was when we took the tanks back from um, like Kuwait back to the port in Saudi Arabia at Al Jubail. When we got there, there was people there wearing respirators and their chemical suits. And we're sort of saying, well, what have you got them one for? It's all over. And they're saying, but these shells are radioactive. That's where we've got them on. And there we've been climbing all over them for months on end and didn't know any different. But we found out later that there was an order came from the British commander. Uh, medical Services UK, wasn't it? Yeah. Saying that depleted uranium shell tipped shells should be treated as a hazard. The U.S. Army has long been aware of the hazards presented by depleted uranium ammunition. This military training video is based on a manual that was written but not distributed before the 91 Gulf War. Heavy metal toxicity may occur if depleted uranium enters the body through open wounds, inhalation, or ingestion. Depleted uranium dust or smoke may be inhaled if respiratory protection is not worn. It may also be picked up and ingested if gloves are not worn and the dust is not washed off before eating, drinking, or using the latrine. Or unstable munitions should be marked, secured, reported, and left for specially trained recovery retrograde teams. So the dangers have been known for more than a decade, but the generals are reluctant to scrap uranium weapons because they give a massive military advantage. Hence, U.S. military attempts to silence critics. And they said, you are putting your career at risk. I received telephone call from many places in the United States, and when I responded to Washington that I will not stop my work, I kept receiving telephone calls from my colleagues from the Army time from before some from the different parts of the saying uh, intimately to me, Asaf, please stop doing that work because there is nothing good for you or for, for anybody in it. Professor Durakovich was later tipped off by friends that there was a serious threat to his life. Since then, he has lived in a secret location in Canada. Strange things have also happened to Professor Günther. Ich lief hier auf der Straße, weil das hier verschmutzt war. Ich lief auf der Straße, da sah ich dann, dass da ein Auto stand. Und wie der mich sah, fuhr er ganz schnell auf mich zu, streifte mich und ich flog hier in den Graben rein und war dadurch schwer verletzt. Ich kam dann ins Krankenhaus, war lange Zeit in Behandlung. Und nachdem ich dann entlassen war, habe ich eine Strafanzeige gestellt bei der Polizei. Die sagten, ja, können Sie sich erinnern, welche Nummer das Auto hatte? Nein, naja, da müssen wir es gegen unbekannt machen und später wurde das Verfahren eingestellt. But who could have wanted Professor Günther dead? Ich habe mir auch diese Frage gestellt. Natürlich ist man mir in der Bundesrepublik Deutschland besonders böse darüber, dass ich rausbekommen habe, dass diese Urangeschosse eine deutsche Technologie ist. In Deutschland entwickelt worden. In January 2001, the German news magazine Der Spiegel reported that in 1972-73, the Rhein Metall Arms Company had asked a Göttinger professor to run trials involving uranium-tipped ammunition. And at Schrobenhausen in Bavaria, Spiegel research showed that the arms group MBB had spent 17 years to 1996 testing DU munitions. Siegbert Horst Günther was born in 1925 at Halle in eastern Germany. 
zwischen meine Eltern, meinem Vater und meiner Mutter, auf die ich sehr stolz bin.